Today, once more, they will replenish themselves, cheat death again, through the power of their source. Matt Stone, 180DegreeHealth.com Hey, this is Matt Stone from 180 Degree Health. Just a quick video tonight. Just wanted to talk about the fundamentals of type 2 diabetes because that's something people are very interested in. It's also something that people seem to be very confused about. Uh, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, you hear all these types of terms being thrown around. All of them refer to basically a, a dysfunction in sugar regulation in the blood. So glucose levels become too elevated. Maybe after a meal they become higher than what is normal. It takes a while for them to come back down to normal levels after a meal has been consumed uh, and so forth. So that's really what the disease is. And a lot of people are putting all this focus on things like sugar or starch or just carbohydrates in general as being something that they believe you know raises blood sugar again and again and therefore leads to uh, you know the insulin receptor shutting down and a person becoming numbed out to the insulin signal. And if you look closely at diabetes, we know that this is a pretty foolish notion and that it's more of a scientific fairy tale or more of a rumor than it really is actual fact. If you were to look deeper at the condition of diabetes and blood sugar regulation, you see that we have a whole host of different hormones that are in place to raise blood sugar levels. So one of the things that makes blood sugar chronically elevated is an excess of these hormones that raise blood sugar. Everybody wants to put all the blame on insulin. Insulin is actually the hormone that lowers blood sugar. So it, it's kind of a, a strange paradox. But we have all these hormones, the glucocorticoids, which are primarily produced by the adrenal glands, that raise blood sugar. And an excess of these hormones uh, keep blood sugar elevated. It keeps sugar from getting into the cells and being stored away properly. Um, it has all, a, a very strong anti-metabolic effect. It has a lot of different uh, associations it causes a release of fatty acids into the blood, so you see some of these other things that you normally associate with type 2 diabetes, such as high triglycerides and elevated levels of free fatty acids and things in the blood. So you see these kind of changes occurring with type 2 diabetes and, and metabolic syndrome and everything that's on that sort of spectrum. And you can really pin a lot of this stuff on the excess production of these glucocorticoids. You also have the liver, which plays a very vital role in detoxifying or breaking down the glucocorticoids. Uh, one of the liver's main functions is to break these corticoids down. If the li liver is dysfunctional, such as in the case of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or cirrhosis of the liver or other liver diseases, a lot of times you see the excess accumulation of corticoids in the blood and the urine and, and things like that because it's not being broken down properly by the liver. So there probably is a connection between um, you know some of the things that we're finding about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease such as the primary role of polyunsaturated fats in uh, helping that disease come about and some of the damage that's actually done to the liver with the, the oxidation of those uh, very very heat and light sensitive uh, in oxygen sensitive type of fat. So anyway, there's some in interesting connections there, but ultimately I've had a lot better success with people who are on this spectrum and people, even people that have full-blown type 2 diabetes and they've had that diagnosis with eating regular meals with lots of starch, starch and sugars and things even, they raise insulin, they lower the glucocorticoids and the insulin resistance starts to unravel. You see the, the metabolism on its way up and you see the stress levels basically go down. So getting a lot more sleep, eating regular meals, eating plenty of carbohydrates and things like that, you actually see the blood sugar getting lower and lower and lower and coming closer and closer to normal, even eating foods that maybe when a person started because their glucocorticoids were so high, was actually sending their blood sugar maybe up to 250, 300 milligrams per deciliter, really, really high. Now they eat the same thing and maybe they're at 140, 130 an hour after a meal or something like that. So you see some really substantial improvements in really the core, the root of what causes type 2 diabetes. So if you want to look at the what causes it, 
what you can do to address and approach the causes of that. Anything that's always going to that's going to be de-stressing in terms of shutting down those stress hormones, and it could be any number of things. There's obviously a million potions and programs and gadgets and who knows what else that people are using as a de-stressing type of thing. But I mean, you know, something that shuts down that physiological stress reaction, and that usually boils down to getting better sleep. I think if you have diabetes, uh, I would think nine to ten hours of sleep would be an absolute minimum amount of sleep that you need to be getting each day. Um, you definitely eating regular meals and not skipping meals or eating really irregular things, but you know just a set meal program that keeps your glucocorticoids, your cortisol levels and whatnot, uh, nice and balanced throughout the day. So actually eating frequently and making sure that carbohydrate is supplied so that the body doesn't have to borrow it from the system by elevating the glucocorticoids to do that. So anyway, those are some basic things that you can do, but obviously there's a million things that you can do to de-stress. But I, I want people to understand what diabetes is all about, not be thinking about, you know, oh, it's caused by candy bars and it's caused by, um, you know, sugar consumption or soft drinks or any of those things because it's not caused by those things directly. There's a whole a lot of other things going on underneath the surface. and We really need to look at physiologically what the disease is all about and look at how we can fix that. And we know that if you pull the adrenal glands or the pituitary gland, which triggers the, the you know, big action that goes on in the adrenal glands, if you remove those glands, you actually see the diabetes abate and regulate itself better. So we know that there's something that's stimulating excessive activity. And if you look at carbohydrates, carbohydrates universally lower that activity, not increase it. So it's pretty foolish that we've been uh, blaming all this and pinning it all on carbohydrates. If I clear up anything in this video, let it be that. It doesn't matter what you have for lunch. Just eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it.